Johnny, Johnny, we were pining for you. Even now, we're pining. When I wake in the country, I dream of being in London. Then when I get here, it's full of people like you. Johnny, this rain is a shambles, do you not think? My father risked life in a limb hiding that thing, Charles, up an oak tree. Has he forgiven you? Oh, he's forgiven me. I shall forgive him. Why did he banish you this time? Well, it is a fine morning. I'm walking through the galleries. The king is walking through the galleries. Mm -hmm. I'm splendidly alone. The king is surrounded by a slow-moving troop of Mediterranean. The wife's family. <laughs> and he must make show of me. Behold, the Earl of Rochester, the wit, the poet. Pray, let us have some amuse. What am I to do? Then I recall, in my pocket, I have a sketch of something rustic with nymphs. I pull it out and deliver. In the Isle of Britain, long since famous grown for breeding the best cunts in Christendom, rat me thinks I, this is not the piece of paper I had supposed. The king's eyes are more piercing than I can remember. The jaws of his entourage are decidedly earthbound. This piece of paper is not covered merely with the thump and slop of Congress. This poem is an attack on the monarchy itself, culminating in a depiction of the royal mistress striving to flog the flaccid royal member into a state of excitement. This you'd believe, had I but time to tell you, the pains it cost to poor laborious Nelly, whilst she employs hands, fingers, mouth, and thighs, ere she can raise the member she enjoys. Or 